Real Entrepreneurs TV, Mel Hurst Jr. here with Paul DeRosell. Super excited while we going over this hump during COVID-19 right now, talking about uh, how we're adjusting our businesses and how, uh, if you're interested in his, uh, how you can kind of get started. And here's, I'm super, super excited about uh, this industry uh, that we're about to talk about. What's up, Paul? Good morning. How you doing, bro? Man, what's up, man? It's just good to see you again, man. Good to see you too, man. So... So, tell us a little bit about uh, exactly what it is you do before I describe it. So, how would you describe what it is you do? Uh, if you're a basketball fan, right? I mean, I know we're about to talk about football, a sports right. agency, but I, I would say that the agency is more like a point guard, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and being starting my own sports agency and, and running the day to day operations of it. For the most part, what I'm doing, man, is just I'm, I'm helping navigate and guide a young man's career, right? That's mm -hmm. from making decisions as to talking to team personnel, for example, with the draft being a couple of days away and, and having two guys that are draft eligible. I've been talking to a lot of teams, I'm talking to a lot of scouts, a lot mm -hmm. of general managers, a lot of high level personnel just about the process. How do you feel this player would fit? Where are you thinking about taking them in the draft? And they just want to know a little bit more background and just advocating on behalf of your, of your player. Not so much doing a lot of gassing up, but just having a conversation like you and I have. You know, right. he know they've watched years of film, so they know that player's strengths. They know their weaknesses. So it ain't nothing I can say. I can't lie. Uh, an honest advocate for my player and try to get them in the right position. And, and aside from that, there's also training. So there's a the pre-draft process where, you know, most players – I'm going to train someone. So one of my guys is here training Michael Johnson performance in Dallas. So okay. obviously, I'm going to pay for that training. We, that number can get a little up there at times. Uh, you're going to provide a stipend, make sure that they're good, that they can just have a normal life throughout the process because they're really all they're doing is football. And so it's, it's the agent's responsibility to kind of facilitate and, and make that transition as easy and seamless as possible. Mm -hmm. And for the audience, uh, Paul is a sports agent with C2 Sports. Uh, agency so right now we want to kind of uh demolish all of the misconceptions and misunderstandings <laughs> of the industry because right now hbo and the rock and jerry Maguire just makes it sound and look like the sports agency lifestyle is just uh being a salesperson um and and really feeding off of the alley so you want to talk a little bit about how hollywood is making that industry uh look and what's reality Oh, absolutely, man. You know, even growing up, Jerry Maguire was one of the first movies I ever I ever saw, right? I watched right. Jerry Maguire. It had, you know, I was like 95, 96, and me right. turned up. I'm, I'm ready. You know, I'm shoot. But in Ballers, too, right? You watch Ballers. You know, you mm -hmm. think of a sports agent as a guy in a suit, slick, slick hair, fast talking, this, this, <laughs> this. So, and you I showed you my hair. Uh, like, you remember I took my hat off a little bit. You, you uh, came at me with the J. Cole and that. <laughs> that's kind of how I approach it, though. You know, he he said that, you know, not long, no matter how long or whatever everybody else in the rap business is doing, he's gonna he's gonna run things the way he wants to run it, right? He's not gonna do what everybody else does. So that's the way I looked at it. I never felt like I had to fast talk people or make all these promises or give all this money out and. Now, I don't, I'm not sitting here to snitch on other people or what other people are doing, but I, I've mm -hmm. heard that, you know, some guys in in, the, in this business, some guys, some of the players, they're going to sign with who gives them the most money, like yeah. up front. They don't really mm -hmm. care. And especially with how the status of the new rookie contracts are, it's really only so much negotiation that an agent is going to do because all, all the price, everything is set. For the most part, so it's not really much negotiation. The, so yeah. some so players are the opinion the that they of the uh, new rookie. Tell us about that for the people that don't know. Cause I don't. I don't know. What does that mean? What does that mean for you? The new rookie contracts and how it affects your business. I mean, for me, um, you know, the new CBA just well. First of all, in the back in the day, like 2010, 2011, you were first round pick. You were getting big, 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 big money, right? So when the new CBA passed in 2011, that's the collective bargaining agreement. It, it slotted rookies, right? So it, and like no matter who you are, if you get picked 68, slotted at a certain position, and that's how much money you're gonna get paid, right? So um, it, it affects the rookies because they because they have to make it to that second contract. So as an agent, you have to be more selective as to who you pick and who who, who you're gonna represent because for the most part. Unless you represent a high-level first-round guy, your payday's not going to come. 
at uh, until that second contract. So, and the good thing about this new CBA that just passed is that the rookies get a little bit more money early on, but it's not a significant amount of money. Like it's not the greatest amount of money. So, it's um it's an adjustment as an agent, but it, you just have to be smarter in who you recruit and, and which type of guys you want to represent, right? Because if you don't really know a guy, you can represent a guy four years, and as soon as that it's time for him to get that big contract, he can leave to go to another agent. So you better off with three or four guys who who you know are really really with you, than you know spending all this money on the front end of these big guys who will leave you soon as soon as they blow up. Kind of like Josh Norman. I don't know if you remember Josh Norman was a fifth round guy, small school, right? As soon as it was time for him to get his eighty ninety million paid. Uh, the guy who had been with him in the beginning to sign with one of the one of the big 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 guys. So, man, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot goes into it, bro. Man, with with a volatile industry like that, why a sports agency for you as a business? Man, you know, you can say that about anything, right? I went to law school. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, at the time I went to law school, people were saying the same thing, right? Is oh man, there's so many lawyers. There's mm -hmm. so many people who don't do this and do that. And, and I'm of the opinion, man, in being a business person and being an entrepreneur, my whole life I've lived by the Russell Westbrook mantra of why not. Mm. So, I mean, you got to have a different type of mindset, right? You got to be a little crazy and delusional that, to, to think that you can make it. And and mm. don't get me wrong, I've taken more L's than anybody in this business, man. Yeah. Like I was telling you earlier, yeah. we were watching that Michael Jordan documentary, the, the Pistons and the Celtics, we were kicking my butt for a long, long time. Yeah. So I, I got into the business, man, because... It's something that I, I really love. I, I've mm -hmm. loved ball since I was playing Tecmo Super Bowl. Uh, you know, growing up playing Madden, everybody else was creating a player. I was creating a franchise, trying to understand mm -hmm. the nuances of, of contracts and how those things work. And it fits my skill set in, in, in interacting with people. I get a chance to meet so many people, man, to, and have an opportunity to help a young man and do it the right way. You know, right. you see a young kid, a young black male, mostly mm -hmm. that I've uh, represented, Mm -hmm. who, who they, they want to get to it. They just need somebody to help them and to help somebody that they trust or someone to help navigate that. And I think one of the reasons I've been able to build a good relationship with people because they know I'm not so much motivated by money. Mo money is a great thing, right? But, right? but I love the game. I love the aspect of, I love the competition of this, man. Like, I feel That's like it. it's me and you one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. right? You gonna come with your pitch. I'm gonna come with my pitch. I feel like I'm better than you. And, and right. that's how you gotta feel, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm... Drew Rosenhaus can be in the same room as me and I can go in there right after him. And I might take that L, but look, he not gonna beat me by 50. You know, right. every year you just chipping away, <laughs> chipping away. Right, yeah, that's good stuff, man. So that aspiring entrepreneur right now that's interested in uh, the sports uh, agency industry, uh, what do you know now that you wish you would have known, you know, <laughs> when you first got started, before you paid for the test, before you actually talked to that first client, uh, if you could talk to to yourself uh, then, I wish I wouldn't. I wish you know honestly, when I first got into this, I thought it was gonna be a layup, you yeah. know. And that's the crazy part because you like, man, I know all these people. Like, I know such and such. I know this. I know that. It's one thing to know somebody, but it's a whole other thing for for somebody to actually trust you enough to sign on that dotted line. Right. right, you can do everything right. You can send a weekly text. You know how it is. It's like back in the day. I was, you know, that one girl that do everything right, but it's just something about it that you know I just can't rock with you like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know you probably can't say that on camera, but look, <laughs> um, like you can do, you can know all these people, but you still got to sign. And and I mm -hmm. think early, like when I first got into it, it was a kid from my hometown. Mm -hmm. And me and him still talk to this day. It's my guy. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. He's right now, he's probably come out after this dream. Yeah. I go, go take the test. I do everything right. And I think it's done. I'm thinking, I'm just banking on the fact that, oh, I got it. Uh, nah, he, he didn't. You mm -hmm. know, and that's the first punch I got. I'm, And, you know, I'm from a small town. So people looking at me like, no, you can't even sign somebody who lived with you, like from mm. your own city. Like you're not gonna make it. And I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. It, it was devastating. It was mm. it, it hurt, but at the same time, I had to go back and look in the mirror. And that's what I can tell a young aspiring age. Like, don't don't take the relationship too much for granted. You still got to do the work. You still gotta 
come up and formulate a plan like for that player when you're sitting there and talk to their parents you're gonna have to have a plan especially when you're young or when you're black you know sometimes when you're a young black business owner you kind of like people looking at you with that skepticism like are you running no limit sports yeah. so you know so you know if you're gonna sit there you're gonna have to have a plan from the first thing that pre-draft process like where are we training what mm -hmm. are we doing you need to come with a plan from now in January to May, and it is this be apply safe. to all sports? This a framework? Is this a framework for all sports? Pre-draft, everything, the workouts, everything. More so, I would. I can speak more to what I know. Like I know with base basketball, there's a pre-draft process, but right, you don't really hear people talking about the basketball combine. That's more mm. workout oriented and team specific, right? Whereas in football, you get ready for a combine, you get ready for a pro day, so you just have to be ready and have a plan, and you also have to know the kid. Mm. Like some players, for example. I know better than to call DJ Chuck on the phone, right? Someday, like, I know his moves, right? So mm -hmm. me and him talking, it's better for us to communicate via text, and I hit him up, say what I gotta say, and be done with it, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Kirk Merritt on the register, I can sit talking to them boys FaceTime all day, because they don't mind small talk. So it's just about knowing your guy, who you represent, their personality, mm -hmm. and building that relationship. Yeah, and what's the reality of uh, the business model? So for the person that thinks, uh, I'm gonna get in the sports agency and every lick is, well, every every sale or every closing or every signing is a million dollar payday, a nine million dollar payday. Oh, I'm getting uh, 60, 70% of everything across the table, right? So what's the, re what's the reality of a Go. sports agency as a business model? Because at the end of the day, a business is just bringing in more revenue than expenses. So tell us about the revenue streams first and then we'll get off into the expenses. The revenue, when you say the revenue stream as to like, so all right, so if you if you sign a guy, you know, chances are, I mean, depends on your marketing, like how much you're gonna, how much you're gonna get off of marketing, the standard is like 10 to 15%. But right, in football, unless you got two or one of these main, main, big, big guys, mm -hmm. you're not gonna have much marketing early on. It's gonna be limited to like- And that's 10 to 15% of what? Of, of what they make, of like, so example, if. You have if you make fifty thousand on a on on a trading card deal, right? I would I would get five if I'm getting ten percent on trade cards. Trade uh, card. So let's use like, draft. <laughs> let's use draft for example then. So if if, if the news says that X Y Z Johnson uh, signed for uh, one million dollars, right? What does that look like for the agency in reality? Uh, in reality, so it's basically the good thing is like the way the, the signing representation agreement is the language mm -hmm. you're going to get your percentage off of the gross mm -hmm. right so if you gross a mill and you know the standard is three percent i'm gonna get three percent of that mill and that's and that's mine mm -hmm. right without having to pay anybody else or anything tricky part is it's kind of like what you make in the expenses. That's why evaluating you can't just be out here signing people just to say I'm signing people. And I've seen, like I looked around, you see sometimes guys inside like 10 people and none of them have a draft grade, none of them have this, and you paying to train these guys, you paying all that money. It's just like, you just in it, you just in it to say you're doing it. Like mm -hmm. for me, I'm gonna take a very, like I'm not signing you unless I feel like you can get drafted. I've been down that road before where yeah. like our first run, and, and, and I know some of my boy Greg is watching this. Yeah. He will tell you about one of our first runs, you know? Like, bro, we was so happy just to sign somebody, right? Right. And we didn't think a lot of things through. We spent way more money than we should have. We just, and once you get, once you touch that stove one time, you're like, okay, I'm coming in here with a set budget. This is right. how much I'm going to spend. This is what your monthly stipend is going to be. So it kind of varies, man. Like, mm -hmm. the, so as a rule of thumb, I don't think you sign anybody that you feel is not drafted. Mm -hmm. The later the player gets drafted, the, the which means the lower the signing bonus is, right? Which also means the lower your percentage is on when you're getting paid. So it's just you gotta find those guys, man, that you really, really believe that can get drafted or make a 53 man roster. Because sometimes it may be a guy who goes undrafted that makes the team. I mean, it's 200, 300 guys in the league right now that mm -hmm. didn't get drafted but are on a roster, and that's where the identifying talent and looking at measurables and, and having smart people around you to help you make those decisions is key. It's, it's yeah. key, man. You can't you can't be out here just signing people to have an Instagram video and a caption and saying such and such would cover two sports. I didn't I'd have been there. Like I just yeah. signed six people one year and took an L. 
right. just you know trying to show people like oh I got it nah man it's it's about being efficient you know how it's, it's about scoring 12 points on seven shots it's about right. efficiency yeah that's good so athletic culture right um especially um high school pretty much uh these blue chips or successful athletes they know uh in their minds that that they're gonna get drafted uh that it will work out so how is a sports agency how could that fit into the career path of a uh, of an athlete of a student athlete you recommend it so one day wanting to get into the business would you recommend a sports agency as a career path for a student athlete uh if the professional sports doesn't work out I would, you know, I mm-hmm. think that, you know, like one of the guys I rep now would like to get into that one day because he likes the business side of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you'll find out real quick if you got the heart from it, right? Because some people just, at the end of the day, they feel like I'm not spending my life and sell myself to somebody. Now, cool. Mm-hmm. Some people feel like, you know, as, as being an agent, you banking on somebody else being good. And, mm-hmm. and like, I don't like that. So right. I get it. So I think it just, it has a lot to do with your temperament. Some people mm-hmm. just absolutely, first time an athlete talk crazy to them, they gonna wanna square up and they like, I'm done with this. So you find out real quick if you got the mental makeup for it and if you're gonna stick to it because chances are, man, you're not gonna win early. You have to go get a top team pick right now. You gotta be real with yourself. Like, mm-hmm. that's not me right now. I'm gonna just have to make a lot of smart signings on guys with high upside and that's gonna make it to the next level. I know my time is right now to be, you know, the lead guy in in the industry i i'm aware of that i mm-hmm. i know my limitations but at the same time i know my strengths right. I, I know that you put me in the living room you let me talk to people i'm gonna get along with people right. I, i'm gonna i'm gonna have i will get along with people i'll do i'll make a good impression and at that mm-hmm. point you just let the chips go where they may man so it, it, it it's kind of like a personal preference on, on evaluating your skill set what you do well yeah I think that's excellent advice, man. So uh, on the business side, right? So if that's revenues, uh, as far as you guys getting a percentage of the earnings of your clients, we don't just want only call them athletes, because I know you guys. Matter of fact, what other services do you guys offer to a client besides just dealing with the teams and the contracts? Well, I mean, you're gonna uh, identify marketing opportunities. I mean, okay. as an agent, man, you wear a lot of hats. Like it's, it's, it's a lot of things, man, you, you help. You know, if, if you need some, if you need somebody to help you plan vacation or something, that's important. You you more you you wear a whole bunch of hats as an agent, man, and mm-hmm. it's it's cool. You become like a go-to for pretty much everything. But it's it's mostly the football stuff. But there's a lot of off-field opportunities that have come about identifying those people and being proactive as opposed to being reactive, right? Mm-hmm. I remember me and DJ early on, we was in everybody DMs, you mm-hmm. know, just. DMing people like such and such, 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 such and and it actually worked in, in a lot of instances. We got a lot of deals that maybe people didn't think we would have gotten because of being proactive and identifying opportunities. Mm-hmm. You no, know, come that person that talks to their parents, you're a bridge. Like everything that's going on, you the guy for the most part. And and I like that kind of responsibility. Right. That's good. So to backtrack for uh the aspiring entrepreneur or the current entrepreneur that is uh, about to take a sports agency test um how, how, do, how do they pro- how do they prepare themselves for the future so they have a plan to be the the jared mcguire of their network um but preparation right you spoke about a test how, how do you make sure that you're equipped and prepared uh for the business once you've decided that this is what i want to do with my life I said, hey, you, hey, man, you killing these questions, man. I just want you to know, you know, hey, you know, I know, you know, man. Good, nigga. I, like, I might, hey. I might, Jerry like Maguire. I might, I, I feel might like Jerry I'm on first. Maguire. I feel like I'm on first tape. Like, okay, <laughs> okay. Nah, but so as far as the testing process, man, a lot of people fail that test. Let me just tell you that first and foremost, like people fail that test because they don't take it as serious and they don't do the preparation. Because, mm-hmm. because you know, you go to DC. You go up to DC and you have to take you I think you pay like twenty five hundred just to take just to get to take the test. And you get you only get to take it twice. If you fail the first time and you go back and take it the next year, I don't think you could take it again for like five years or something like that. It's crazy. So um and like I said, I give I have no problem. I I still have the the study guide that pretty much outlines the test. So I can email it to you so you can get it out to whoever's up next. Right. right. So, mm-hmm. but 
so you go to DC, you prepare to take the test, man. And your 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 question is actually asking like, what are you doing after the test, or what are you doing to prepare for the test? So I'm asking before, if you starting from scratch again, and, and now you have a cheat sheet on on how to prepare, uh, you know, your bag to get started. You already mentioned it. So would you the study guide, for example? So if you need to prepare to be in this business, you might want to get a study guide to prepare for that test instead of getting into it, uh, you know, just cold turkey. So in addition to the study guide, how else uh, could you prepare? Would you would have got a website earlier? Would you would have started networking earlier? That That's what I mean as far as preparation, because the plan is done. I already committed in my mind. I'm going to be a sports agent. I, I think so. I, yeah. I think I would have... I'm sorry, you're breaking up, bro. I hear the last part. What part, uh, what's the last thing you heard? I said, it's preparing for the study guide. What else would you would have prepared? For? What, what other tools uh, you would have gotten to help you prepare to move forward? Uh, well, one of the first things I'd have done, I'd have gotten the inside the league, and, and I'm not a plug for this guy because I don't get no money off of mm -hmm. it, but inside the league by this guy named Neil Stratton. He has this Book? website just for like rising agents and people who want to be agents. And he, mm -hmm. man, he does a great job. It's just, you have to pay for it, but mm -hmm. man, he does a great job breaking down the nuance of business. He does a great job. So it's uh, inside the league. I would have gotten that a long time ago. I think secondly, I would have done, just got on, there's this website called Spotrack, mm -hmm. where you can kind of look at all the NFL contracts, right? Like I'm talking about every single one from signing bonus down to guaranteed money and all that. So. It just gives you a framework, so you know you have a little bit more knowledge going into uh, mm -hmm. just how things work. I think also I would have probably tried to identify a mentor or somebody who's really doing it in the business mm -hmm. right now. You know, I've been blessed to have people that I can look up to. You know, I'm not I'm not a fan of anybody. Let me just say that like I'm not about to be all up in the pictures. You know, running after David Mulligetta, Drew Rosenhaus, Todd Frank. But when I meet him, when I see him, I speak and I say, "What's up?" So there's been times where there's people I've reached out to just to get advice and learn more about it. So I went into it, I think, just thinking, I'm coming in here, I'm about to kick everybody's ass, right? Yeah. That's not the yeah. case. It's, it's not. Right. It's it's a long process. It's, it's the reason you see people cry at drafts. It's the reason you see people cry when they win rings. You know, like, I ain't got 300, 400,000. Like, some people are succeeding in this business just because they got more money than you. Mm. I mean, and that's the truth. Right. Whereas... Whereas a guy like me, you know, I got a good amount of capital, but at the same time, I ain't at the top of them. You know, I can't just write a blank tip. So right. I would say be be very aware of your finances and, and how much money you can spend. So, like, crunch them numbers as to what the percentage you would stand to make if this worst case scenario, this guy does not get drafted and makes the team, right? Like, be more, I would be more numbers oriented. I made a lot of decisions with my heart and, yeah. like, emotion like and you've got to kind of balance that because in your mind you're like man this guy's so good the league don't see how good he is i know it and these people will look you in your face like this man is not getting drafted <laughs> i'm like no no and, and look a couple months later you sitting out you know you didn't took that there you thinking about that 10 12 racks you didn't spend on training you, yeah. you ain't never seeing that that's, that's yeah. the fuck. so and, and like and but the crazy part is sometimes you might hit off of your gut too that's the thing you know, it's like hitting on 16 when you're playing blackjack, right? It's a right. matter of preference. So, mm -hmm. it, but the longer you do it, and, and, and I'll say this, the longer you do it, the, the less likely you are to make bad signings. And I mean bad signings just from, are they good enough to play? But then personality-wise, like, some people you just not going to mess with, man. Like, yeah. you like you can't have a player who got filet mignon expectations with, you know, Angus beef skill set, oh. right? And, <laughs> and, and 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 you know, as an agent, you have to be willing to take the blame for stuff that's not even your fault, mm. right? There's gonna right. be a bunch of people out there blaming their agent for the coronavirus. Now, you see, but if my agent, like as an agent, you can literally, bro, play your heart out. You mm. give it everything you got. And somebody will be unhappy with you if things don't go their way, and that's right. and 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 that's another thing. You know, you and I were talking about earlier. If you're an agent, you gotta be, you gotta be willing to. To have people be angry at you for things that were, you know, I can't draft you. Right. You know, I'm not in that war room. Ain't nobody going to draft you because they like your age. That's over. Mm -hmm. That's never going to happen. Wow. Okay. And what's the difference between going uh, with, an, with an agency versus just an agent? 
Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, for me, I have people around me with personnel. There's a, it, it's a matter of preference, right? It's like whether, you, like, some people are always going to sign with the super agency because they want the PRs that they want the machine behind them. And a lot of times, they'll find that they get lost in the shuffle because it's like a hundred other people, you mm -hmm. know? So the, the good thing about going with an agent that maybe doesn't have as many people early on is that you had an individual attention and, and you, you, you're the guy, like you're a big, big part of what we're doing. You're more like a partner mm -hmm. than a player. Right. So it, it's, a, it's a matter of preference. Like I, if, if it was me, you know, I, I feel like if you look at how LeBron and Rich Paul are, they started off, right? Mm -hmm. It was them, it was them two. And they built, and that's the, the framework of what I like to see C2 mm -hmm. go to. Like, building with guys that you're close with, it, it being more of a family than, like, a factory. Then it's just, right. then this big super agency. I've always been an opinion. I got 10 to 12 guys that's riding with me, and I know we're together, and they're really good players, and they're doing, mm -hmm. and they're really good people. That's all I can ask for, man. Yeah. If I happen to get rich along the way, then that's cool. But if not, I love the sport and the competition of it all so much, man, and I'm good. Good. That's perfect. So we talking right now to the to that uh, that college senior, uh, that college freshman right now that just made the decision because of this episode. Hey, I'm gonna commit to being uh, a sports agent. I, I like what he's saying. I got the skin uh, and the patience for this industry. So I'm a grad study guide uh, to take the test. Uh, I'm gonna take the inside sales course. Uh, I'm gonna start networking. Uh, what else? Um, what else should they be doing right now? They gonna um, take the test next year, 2021. How should they first be? Of all, yeah. First of all, get off the gram and all that Twitter, all that like I'm the hardest working person in the room and all that. Like, nah, I man, just just like like my boy D1 say, just shut up and grind. Like you right. like if you if you built for it, you built for it. Like, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. And you'll find out really quick in this game whether you like the idea of being an agent or if you really want to be an agent. Right. Bro, it's so many people get to this business, think they want to be an agent because they didn't watch the movies. It's not like that. Let's just, I'm gonna keep it a whole bunch band, which, and you know, I didn't come here to, to pump sunshine and say, oh, it's gonna be great. I'm finally starting to win and I know I'm good. You know what I mean? And how long, like, how long, uh, uh, how many years you in? Four or five oh. years before you get any any type of success. You know, when DJ mm -hmm. Tuck got drafted in 2018, that's the first time I had a guy drafted, you know, second round. Because the kid that came down, I'm telling L's leaving, you know, like mm -hmm. all the hurt. All the times you're so close on getting a guy and you miss. So I, I would tell that young kid to be prepared to take care of it. Like, right. be prepared mentally, but also build your network. Realize there's probably people in your town who are really good players. Mm -hmm. Like, most times, especially if you're from Louisiana, right? right? Everybody got somebody they can play. Start mm -hmm. building those relationships and showing people that you're competent. Because, like I said, everybody can know you. Oh, that's a little Paul. He cool, right? Mm -hmm. Nah, they want to see you. They want to see that you have the, the acumen, that you have the ability, that you that you that dog. So like, mm -hmm. it's straddling that line. Like you don't want to get put in the homeboy box either. You know right. where I, I be friends with the people in my school and, and the athletes, but you also have to know them that, you also have to have enough IQ and ability that when the big super agents come, that mm -hmm. you can withstand that and they trust you enough to, to help guide them. Yeah, good man. So, common denominator we've been hearing uh, from all our guests for people that take the leap uh, you know to step into entrepreneurship because they just can't walk away uh, from that feeling uh, what, what does support look like uh, on your end uh, you had people support you to make the decision uh, you were a lone wolf in the decision uh, describe that feeling uh, as far as encouragement to do this to do this business Um, I think, you know, a lot of people, bro, I trust me, I love to sit here and say, man, ain't nobody believe in me. I had to get my bag all on my, that, that would, that would absolutely be a lot. I, right. I'm, I'm blessed to have people around me that believe in me so much mm -hmm. that they understand it. Like, Paul ain't gonna just, Paul might be crazy, but he's not gonna just do no outlandish, like, like, he, there's gotta be a vision behind it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think those people... Who I cared about, they might have questioned it because you know at the time, man, when I really made a decision early on, I'm out of law school. I'm like, I'm gonna make partner at a law firm. Everything gonna go how I'm drawing it up, right? If I was gonna stay at that path, making way more money. Like if I told you the pay cut that I've had to deal with, you know, in trying to get to where I want to go, you got yeah, man. My dad, my parents, they're like, you sure? 
Right. You, you sure about this? You, right. you, the, the security of it all, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the, the safety uh, mm -hmm. and the prestige that comes with being at a top 10 law firm in the country. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can't let that go. Right. And, and for me, I mean, man, I, I would say that just having that support of people who love me unconditionally, it mm -hmm. kind of gave me that strength. I, it's so many people, man, I can't even post nothing like back home about my sports agency. I was sharing it. And so man, I had a lot of people push me and a lot of outside people who giving me money along the way, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, I ain't even expecting nothing back. Just do what you gotta do. It's been mm -hmm. I've been blessed. Right. To not have to go through this alone. Right. So what's your advice to the to the small town person or just a person um without that support system, right? They had a different uh background. <laughs> but still have that same fire, the same dog, the same drive and interest in the industry, but doesn't have that, that support, you know, during this early period of about to take the test or just pass the test and is in that, that now what phase, right? But that support is not there. How, how can we encourage them? Well, first thing I'd encourage them, I'd give them my Instagram and my social media. Like, I, yeah. I've never been, a, mm -hmm. I believe that. We all got an opportunity to be special. I don't look at them as competitors because at the end of the day, I can teach you what I know. I can tell you, but I'm one of one, right? So mm -hmm. what it looks like for me with holding. So the first thing I say, reach out to people that you know are going to help. Like mm -hmm. anybody watching this, you know, feel free to give them my social media and my email. I, I would like to become a leader in this business, you know, not mm -hmm. just, I don't want to just get it and, and not help people because I wish I would, in certain instances, I wish I'd have had more mentorship in this mm -hmm. and I probably wouldn't have lost as much early. So if I can help somebody else, get there I will but I'd also tell the people you know I don't know what people's religious principles are mm -hmm. but it varies but 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 I would say that you know my belief in God and God carrying me through some dark dark times you know and mm -hmm. having you know not being at a job sleeping on my cousin's couch for mm -hmm. a while going through a divorce you know a lot of those things man God is God is real and uh, I would advise that you getting on this journey you you gonna need him, right. regardless of who you. So I'm I'm not trying to go TV takes, bro. But I'm just <laughs> you know I, I I have to share that you know. Right. But uh, and, and I say you have to have that belief in yourself, man, and and, mm -hmm. and do it because like for me, had I not been able, had I not done this, it'd have been a void the rest of my life. I could be a partner at a law firm right now, probably mm -hmm. making five six hundred thousand. You never know what it is, right? Right. But I'd have never felt fulfilled. So at least if you go at it and you give it everything you got, man, mm -hmm. and you take that L, at least you know. You tried your best, and you gave, and you gave it everything you had. Yeah, I think that's good advice, man. And um, that being a career path for uh, student athletes, because I, I didn't know the ins and outs of it like that. So basically, it's uh, if you could position yourself to generate, just like other businesses, generating leads, generating potential clients uh, that turn into clients, understanding the business, the marketing portion of it. This can be a career path and you can still stay involved with the industry that you love which is you know athletics um, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's amazing yeah and, and the, 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 you kind of have somebody pull that curtain back as to mm -hmm. you know like like somebody say you like bro chances are you're not getting no first round pick early you're gonna have to you're gonna have to grind like I don't know if you've seen uh Nicole Lynn uh the, the female sports agent well, I'm sorry not female a woman sports agent but She's getting a lot of attention, young, young black lady doing her thing. Mm -hmm. People I only guess. see her in the green room. You know, they saw her last year when she signed Quentin Williams. They don't know she's been, you know, they don't know about her mixtape days, you know, where she <laughs> signing guys that was not that was not going to the league. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you got to be prepared to weather that storm and just run your own race. And and right. that's the thing you can't, I can't sit here and worry about what Rosenhaus, what everybody else doing. I just got to find what I do. So if I'm going in your living room, for example, and I'm going to meet your parents and I want to sign you. Mm -hmm. I'm not just going there, bro. I done been on your Instagram. I'm researching a lot about you, your, your family background. It's a lot easier for me to go into a living room where I know what I'm going, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I know your parents like bounce music and I might throw a little soldier slide, a little soldier slim reference in there, you know what I mean? So <laughs> you gotta, bro, you gotta love your craft, man. You gotta mm -hmm. and realize what you good at. Right. Some people ain't got no personality to go sit in the living room. So you better you better have somebody within your agency that's the, that you can the more day-to-day -day guy. Like, right, for me right now, I'm playing multiple positions. And mm -hmm. there's people 
that I, I'd like to bring into the agency and I see that skill set. But right now, nah, bro, I'm I'm brawn against the Warriors. Right. And uh it's 17. Right. That's good, man. That's good. So we have the sports agency. Uh right now, what is your uh, social media information for the people that's interested in that mentorship? And how would have you have gone about getting a mentor? So two things. What's your uh Instagram? And uh what would you have done different to get a, a mentor earlier on? Uh and, and you know, bro, that life humbles you, right? Like mm -hmm. older me, you know, me in my thirties, me and my twenties thought I could, you know, take on the world. I didn't really need people. And that and that was foolish. That was foolish mm -hmm. pride, you know. Mm -hmm. And so what I would do is a couple of things you could do. The, the NFLPA has the website of all, all the agents, right? Mm -hmm. Like has a list of agents, right? Okay. And what you can do is just go on that site and see who's from your town and see what agent is from your city, right? Or, or where they're based. And just send out an email, introducing yourself, saying you want to get in the business. Hey, man, look, I was wondering if there's anything I could do if I could shadow you. The time is, bro, nine times out of ten, people value that type of uh, assertiveness and mm -hmm. uh, proactivity. Mm -hmm. So most times, they'll hit you back because they'll see some of themselves in you because yeah. a single agent in this game they will be lying to you if they tell you that they didn't get lucky somewhere along the way. Mm. You look at Buzz Cookie signed Brett Favre out of nowhere, right? Mm. David Mulligetta, he he signed Jamal Charles, who was his homeboy at Texas. And look what he didn't turn into. So every agent knows that deep down, no matter how arrogant, how much you feel in yourself, you know that you wouldn't be where you at if somebody didn't help you. So mm. I feel that most of them will be willing to help you. So get on the NFL PA site. Reach out to whatever agents you got to reach out to. Okay. Um, and and study that. And also, you know, there's sports law classes. There's things online that you can do. It's, I mean, it's, it's a way to stay into the game. Like, for me, I'm reading Track every single day to see what's going on with contract situations and this, this, and that, man. I'm telling you, and you'll be surprised at how sharp you stay if, you, if you're disciplined and, mm -hmm. and you really love your craft. Yeah. So, my social media, I think you asked me to my social yeah, media man. is at i'm sorry that's what i was asking what's your social your uh, instagram it's uh okay so my business is at c2 sports c the number two sports agency that's that's my instagram and all my other social media is my name paul Darius, uh, P A U L D E R O U S S E L L E. gotcha Good stuff, man. Well, I think this is uh, a good segue to sidestep uh, into our fire round. These are two questions that we ask to each guest. Oh. You ready? Okay. Hey, hey, you hit me with that out of nowhere. I see you hit me with the We're segue. Okay. To, <laughs> okay. We're supposed to. We're supposed to. So, well, smooth with it. so check it out. If you had to take one book with you, Right to an island, and you can't come back. What's the one book you're taking with you? One book. You gotta take one. The Tony Evans Study Bible. Okay. Why? You you want me, you want, I gotta give you that at? because man I, I I got it for Christmas. It was a Christmas gift, and mm -hmm. it, it just has so much for every situation. So I figure if I'm on an island by myself, right? Right. I'm gonna be bored. I'm gonna I'm start losing it because you didn't say I had Netflix. You didn't say I had nothing. So at that no, point, nah. at you that point, man, I just want to start getting. I'm a. I want to start getting my soul right. You know, it's, mm. I'm gonna need a lot of patience. Mm. You know, I'm gonna need patience. I'm gonna need to lean up on something that I'm gonna get off the island. Right. So I'm bringing my Tony Evans study Bible, man, okay. I, all the time. And if, if I wasn't, and if, so if you're gonna segue into like a regular book that I would read that is not the Bible, then I don't know, man. Maybe the power broke. Damon John, the, uh, I like the that. Guy was yeah, yeah, I like that one. I like that one. So I normally ask for the for the one book because um, entrepreneurship it just goes deeper than business, right? It's the the eighty twenty uh, Pareto, right? So you know twenty percent uh, is is really the cause of the eighty percent of those results. So the, the mental battle uh, that we go through on a day to day has nothing to do with. Uh, the objectivity of what we do as far as systems and processes and managing people. Uh, I know speaking for myself with my business, them tough times, just like you say, it's, it's them times in, in the shower on that ride back home 
on a ride at the beginning of the day where you need that, that strength uh or knowledge or encouragement from somewhere so i think both books uh will work I, i'm gonna check out tony evans and i read power broke so that's a good one all right hey man that, that tony that tony evans bible mm -hmm. like hey man like you said your business bro if you ain't never cried about it you know and you ain't never cry and you ain't never hurt and you ain't never look at your old w uh tools <laughs> which you didn't walk away from and, and had regrets you, you know i feel like there's a reason all people who started a business can kind of sit there and be and be a fraternity of, of right. like, like we didn't all take them l's and, and be right. like bro what was i thinking like right. what's wrong with me dog? Right. like why so right. I, that bible gonna help that's good man so same situation you lost everything you have today what would you do to get back to where you are right now if i lost everything right now right you're gonna like, the same island everything is gone but you're coming back how would you get back to where you are right now Start all right round zero see maybe it's man, man dang so maybe it's the lawyer in me i'm trying to get you know maybe i'm overthinking the question so you said i go on the island and i get off the island like so long I lose, I lose everything right right you're not overthinking it you you stripped to nothing you just paul you you just paul right now and you got to get back to c2 sports agency from the beginning okay what's that well, map like man so i get off the island first thing i do is i go get a haircut <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> but um I think, man. I mean, that I don't know, don't strip away that dog does in you. That that ain't gonna do nothing. So, like, right. honestly, I just revert back on my training and my mindset. So that means, all right, who, you know, I lost all these contacts. And look, I, I gotta start from scratch. So mm -hmm. I gotta go back to the NFL combine. I gotta go back to the Senior Bowl. I gotta go back and reconnect with people. Mm -hmm. I gotta pay this money. I gotta somehow, if I gotta get a regular job, to help fund my dream and me to get back to where I gotta go. I'm, Go get a regular job. I'm gonna right. go. I'm gonna go punch that clock. Right. I'm gonna go take this. I'm gonna go take this agent exam again. I can pay. I didn't pass it before. I'm gonna pass it again, right? And, and, and here we are. It's just that to me, it would almost be fun to start over. I, I, sometimes I wish I would get just a clean slate and not have made all those mistakes. Because I'm coming back. I didn't lose that knowledge on the island, right? Mm -hmm. Part of the reason mm -hmm. I struggled early on because I thought I was invincible. So now this island and humbled me. So I'm coming back on the island. I'm new. I'm coming back on the island like LeBron did the second time in Cleveland. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a different I'm a different dog when I come off that island. And it ain't no doubt I'm gonna get it back. Right. So I'm just lean on my resources. I'm still gonna be able to rec out recruit these other people. I still I'm still gonna be able to identify talent and find those gems that ain't nobody talking about. Mm -hmm. So we good. Yeah. We be fine. Good stuff, man. You believe in uh in work life balance? Or does it Absolutely. exist or it doesn't? It, it it should. Yeah. Um, as somebody who unfortunately uh didn't do that so right, mm -hmm. you know, in my in my you know, in being had been married before, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's difficult because the thing that make you great can also be you know one of your biggest detriment, right? The ability to lock in and be singularly focused on one thing and become obsessive about it, naturally you're gonna lack in other areas. But you know, as somebody who's you know, with an eight-year-old daughter now, man, mm -hmm. I I have a different appreciation. Like I said, I done been on that island before, bro. You know, yeah. like I, I know what it's like to sleep on my cousin's couch and not have my family around and things like that. So mm -hmm. I believe I have to have a work-life balance now. I have to go to those soccer practices. Mm -hmm. I have to, I have to, man. And I and I know if that means I gotta sleep less at night to achieve that work life balance, I'm 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 a proponent of a, of, of a work life balance. I'm gonna go to church. There's certain mm -hmm. things that I, I'm going to do. But you gotta remember, Emil, I come from, you know, when I was at the firm, I'm billing twenty one hundred hours a year. I'm working 60, 70, 80 hours a week, man. I didn't know how to do that. You know what I mean? And I refused to do it because I, I wanted it so bad. But right. now as somebody who's seen both sides of that and and what can happen when you don't necessarily balance those correctly? I believe in work-life balance, but I gotta have it. Right, that's good, man. Well, I appreciate your time, bro. During during this COVID situation, how how has uh, COVID nineteen affected uh, your day-to-day -day operations? Before we wrap up, oh, it, it affected, bro. I had a meltdown when COVID happened. Pro days got canceled. You man. know, two of my guys couldn't even have pro days, and 
bolder than boys. Uh, so pro days got canceled. So we had to figure out a way to have, still have a conduct a virtual pro day. And, you know, it messed up a lot of things, but it forced me to get in my bag and be more resourceful. And, mm. and luckily we were able to, to, to do all that. I've been working from home for mm. the most part, just getting ready for the draft. It hasn't drastically affected me aside from, you know, I can't really go nowhere. Uh, like you said, can't get a haircut, but right. it, it COVID challenged me mm. as, as a younger agent. Mm. I might have gotten rattled, right? Because it's like, damn, like, how are we going to still do this? But whereas as a more mature, as a vet in the game now, I'm like, okay, how do we get these numbers validated? Let me, mm. Let's see. Let's find out. Let, let me call all these teams, right, and find out what numbers would you take if you didn't get to see them. So then you find out, oh, I'll take the numbers of – if you, you can find a retired scout or older scout who we know and trust in the industry, then now mm. we got to find a facility. Now is it it challenged me, man. But maybe I'm weird, bro. But I I embrace that type of stuff. Yeah, like it's fun. Now nah, I just think you you entrepreneur, bro. Everybody's pivoting. So what's the opportunity? So I tell you what, what's the opportunity that came out of this uh, moment that wouldn't have presented itself at all, or much later? I was I would say uh, because of you know not having a pro day, right? Mm -hmm. And because of you know, a lot of the listeners are really familiar, but the pro day is basically like a combine where you know all 32, most of the teams are coming to see you running 40, watch and see you in person, right? So it's really big. A pro day is really, really big for late round guys, guys who are projected to go later, mm -hmm. or small school guys. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, when you had it, I would have. Of course, I'd have been at the pro day. I'd have met scouts, talked to them about my guy and this, this, and that, like the normal stuff. But because right. this didn't happen, I've had a lot more interface with scouts and directors of scouting because you know they didn't really they they didn't get to see a pro day, so they they calling me and talking to me about numbers and this, this, and that. And so my 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 uh contact list has grown exponentially, yeah. like. Hey, email, bro, like, I put a big, see, I get started smiling about this. I got so many people I could talk to now. I done made spreadsheets with broken it down by position coaches. And this is, I met so many That's the only help moving forward, right? So, you know, next year we get to the, towards the draft. I'm calling people in shit in December. Like, hey, <laughs> what's up, man? Look, I got a guy, you know, look, hey, somebody, I want to just put somebody on your radar, this, mm -hmm. this, and that, man. And, and bro. You'll be surprised that like, you think these scouts, these scouts just like talking to me and you. Right. They, they just want to like, get the job want, done. Yeah, they don't want no agent coming up to them like, hey man, I got a guy, he's going to do, they, they respect that you real. And I look, I sound like a pastor, I'm going to let you go, but I was on the phone <laughs> yesterday with, with, a, with, with a scout from an NFL team, right? And he called me and he was like, where, where do you, uh, where do you expect y'all gonna get drafted? He was talking about Kirk Mir, one of my mm -hmm. kids. He's from he went he played ball at Destrehan. Okay. But uh shout out to Kirk if you're watching this. But and Hunter. But so he asked me where did we project to go? Like you know, I, I gave fresh in that to be real about I didn't say, oh, we're gonna go way higher. We're hearing this from this team and that team and that. So he was super happy that I just kept it hundred with him and was just like, nah, this is where we expect to go. Mm -hmm. He asked me what other teams that I've been talking to. I like, come on, bro, I can't tell you that. Like, I'm mm -hmm. not about to, I'm not telling you who who else we're talking. But they, you get that respect in this game when you're honest, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. And what's a book uh, for that aspiring agent in this industry? So you know, you're taking a Tony Evans Bible uh, with you, uh, but what what book could they read uh, right now? Because my question right now is what analytics. Can I uh, analyze to kind of mitigate these mistakes? That's that's my train of thought. Is is operations management. So, are there any resources that can uh, cut the the curve for aspiring a current agent to read? Um, I, I wouldn't uh, like that, bro. There's all the books. Like for example, Drew Rosenhaus has a series of books. I okay. read all his books, but they don't necessarily. They just more talk about the wins, you know, the highlights. Yeah. You know, you ain't really going. I would say the most important thing to do is understand how much you're going to be paying for training and mm. all this type of things. Like, those are the analytics, you know, like, those are, you know, I know you seem to be a real numbers guy. Those are the, 
analytics. Like, how much you have to, how much are you going to spend? Mm. On a high level person, you may, you may spend, you may spend 70, 80 grand, right? So you measure those analytics as to how high you feel they're going to be. It's, it's the reason, it's a way to do it. Like, let's say worst case scenario, right? Don't sit there and say first round, you're getting first round grades. You have to, whatever round you think that the guy's going to go, I would say project two rounds later, just in case, right? So you have a, a number in your head that you can live with. Because everybody ain't a top 10 pick. You got to have that number that you can live with, right? So balance that versus where you project them to go and the life of the contract and how much of that contract is guaranteed, the percentage-wise. So it becomes fun. It's a numbers game. Well, that's good stuff. We're going to let you go, Paul, man. Uh, one more time, how can people get in touch with you? Hey, man, you look like Marshall Falk, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm at the Johnny Sports Agency, bro. Hey, man, you need to come on up. Hey, you don't want your agent in all the videos, yeah. in all the posts, taking all the money. Come, come, come see me, man. Look, hey, I'm I'm light skinned, but I don't act like the rest of the light skinned people, man. I'm like, come, come on. Now, now, I'm at C2 Sports Agency on Instagram. Mm -hmm. At C2 Sports Sports Agency. And at Paul Derrison on Instagram and everything else, man. And if you were, even when I mean this, man, when I say this, I think what you guys are doing, this forum and this platform, man, this, yeah. this is great what y'all doing for the culture. And Thank you. and I don't ever want to be one of the people that say, hit me up. Yeah, hit me up. Like, I got you. I'm going to help you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not one of them clout type people who will say, hit me up. Like, if you really like, hit me up. And you really want to do this. And it's people in the business that will tell you, it's some of my young boys that have helped me with stuff, like right now. Is a young guy want to be an agent right now at Jackson State? He a, he a whole capital, and I'm a whole alpha. But you know, yeah. at the same time, you know, <laughs> we we HBCU brothers. A young kid playing something right now, play cornerback, wants to be an agent. He hits me up, I got you because right. that's my duty, bro. Like I'm gonna get my blessings. I can't talk about the Tony Evans study Bible and not help my brother. Right. You read the book, uh, The Go Giver? Yeah. I I was gonna ask you if you had anything recommended for me because oh, I ain't definitely. got nowhere to go. Yeah, <laughs> check out uh check out a go the Go Giver. Um, that that one is a, a few series too, but uh, but read the original one because they got Go Givers for different uh, industries. But what you're describing, uh, that's what the guy did uh, in a book. He gave his way all the way to the top. So uh, culture, especially in America, kind of teach you to just be a, a wolf and you know shred everything in your way. And this is a different approach. So that's the approach we have. We're going to give and share all the way to the top. And we win when everybody that's else wins. So it's a phenomenal book, man. Phenomenal book. It's small, Yo, too, quick read. I, 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 like less than 200 pages. Hey, I'm I'm on it, man. I, yeah. I want to be that guy. I want to be a leader. I want to be a leader in my industry. But I want to be a real one. I want to show people the way. Yeah, good stuff. Paul Devers, everybody.